Hi guys, charity shop gold or garbage, Yate today, Blue Cross charity shop, £1.25, another Mini Cooper, I think this is three charity shop sessions in a row where I picked up a Mini Cooper, this one's different to the last two, the last two were Rastar, this one is Nikko, N-I-K-K-O. I quite like it, it's got a little bit of flexibility in the back there. So I don't want to call it suspension, but movement anyway. And a little bit of movement at the front. And it's got differential. If I turn the back, if I turn this wheel this way, that one goes the other way. So that's an indication of a slightly better quality toy car. Don't see a date on it anywhere. And also no indication of the frequency. It looks like the label that was there has come off. So let's see if we can get inside. Nice little touch there. There's a little button to push in to release the battery compartment cover. Push that and then slide it. Okay, that looks like it's been well corroded, but somebody's actually taken the corroded batteries out. Uh, I've got some random batteries there. Just check if they're any good. Good, 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 and they'll do just to test it. We might have to take it apart, oh, let's give that a little scrape first I suppose. That looks particularly uh, rusty. Probably going to have to take it apart just to see if it tells us inside what the frequency is. Uh, what have I got? I'll go and grab some transmitters. Well, I won't bore you with the details, but I've tried a selection of transmitters there and it doesn't respond to any of them. So we'll take it apart, have a look inside, do a bit of measurement, see if the batteries are actually giving any power through all that corrosion. Noticing the two screws at the front are shorter than the two screws at the back, so I'll try and remember that when I put it back together. So 
That's not a good start. Nothing there, no nice sticker on it that says whether it's 27 megahertz or 40. Anyway, I'll go and get my meter and we'll measure that, see if we're getting any voltage out. Good. Let's try from the opposite end. Ah, there to there. To there, to there. Must be something that takes voltage out. Yeah, it must be an extra feed there because that, that one's just going to give it 3 volt maximum, that'll give it 4.5. Right. So, yeah, all that corrosion was preventing the batteries giving us a good voltage. But now we're getting it, now that I've cleaned up the batteries a bit. Sold that aerial anyway, aren't we? Right, let's move on. Let's have a look at the receiver. So here's our receiver board. We've got three wires feeding into it. Positive goes down to the switch and then comes out on that green wire. The full four and a half volts, black, goes up to there. And then we've got this orange wire. That connects just there. And there, that's just one and a half volts. That's odd. So it's using our one and a half volt feed for something. Anyway, I'll resolder the antenna. I'm guessing just down here there's a little A in the corner and a big blob of solder on the other side with nothing going to it. So I think that's the antenna wire. Well, time has moved on. I've tried all of my spare transmitters that were tucked away upstairs in my workroom. None of them talk to this. I haven't tried altering the frequency. By um, adjusting this trim pot, there may be a adjustable slug in the middle of it. Maybe. Um, but in the meantime, we could have a look at the engine and gearbox, or motor and gearbox, and we could have a look at the steering. I rather like the way this is detachable. Uh, I don't know if I can get crop clips in there. Uh, a bit of a tight fit. Might be able to. Yeah. So. The motor works. Looks like it might just pop out. Oh yeah. Oh that's handy. Well look at that. A lovely little unit. 
It looks like they just clip together. Now, well, we'll have a look in there, but what usually happens when I try and do that sort of clip is they snap. So I'll try and be particularly careful. Ah, there's a screw in there to hold it all down as well. Didn't spot that. Right, now let's see if it comes apart. Yes, that's better. Well, there we are. That's what we've got inside. So we've got motor, nice metal gear on it. An intermediate gear to drop the RPM or increase the power, whichever way you want to look at it. And in there must be the differential. Can you see that? If I turn that that way, you can see that wheel is turning the opposite way. Lift that out. Right, I have taken one of these apart before. Let's see if we can get it out. Again, I don't want to snap anything because this is all a nice little working unit. There's all the little gears in there. I don't know what do we call this. Um, I call it dropped on the floor at the moment. Right, let's try and get that back in there. Is it planetary gears, do you call it, or something like that? So that those little gears, is this all in focus? So those gears in there turn this one round. So depending on the grip of the wheels, I suppose is the best way to put it. it depends on whether the whole axle spins or one spins and the other one doesn't. You'll have to look up differentials to understand it. I'm certainly not going to try and explain it here. But those three little gears can either allow... Let's push that back together before I lose the bits. Can either allow that to turn like that, or the whole lot turns together. Certainly not explaining myself very well, so I might have a link to a nice video on how differential gears work. Differential? Even that word may not be right, <laughs> but it's the thing that allows your wheels to turn in opposite directions, depending on how the power is fed in, and which wheel has the grip. I've no doubt I'll get lots of comments about that. Lots of people who know a lot more about cars, differentials, gearboxes and that than I do. I only know from observation. Mm. 
Make sure they go back in the right way round. in nicely. That might show it better. If I turn that you can see both wheels are turning the same way but what happens is if one um, is encountering more resistance than the other one then one can turn more than the other. <laughs> Awful explanation, Grandad. Look it up. That's my advice. Just put my finger on there. Right, I'm stopping the top wheel and the bottom one's still turning. Stopping the bottom wheel and the top one's still turning. Release them both and they both turn. That's a nice little unit. Right, so that just goes back in there and clips into place. I do like that. That's a lovely effect. Right, steering. Okay, we'll have a look at that too. So we've got these two very fine wires. And down to the steering. Or the steering motor. well. So this isn't in a separate nice little unit. Ready? That's got a little clip on the front of it. Push that in. Is that going to release it? Doesn't want to. Now we should be able to get the top off. So what have we got for steering? We've got magnetic steering, I suppose is the best way I can put that. That's a coil. Lift out. Yeah. There we are, coil. So that creates a magnetic field. And on there, we've got a magnet. So it pushes it one way or the other. So that's an interesting steering setup. It's actually gripping itself on there, but I would guess it will, yes, it will pull itself one way or the other, depending on which way the current flows. I don't know if I can 
make it do that. Yes, did you see that? Try and swap that over to go the other way. see what I'm doing. Power. Ah, it went. Just so I was trying to adjust myself. Right, so that's pushing it. Must be having a coil on this end. It's attracting the magnet to this side. If I push it back, it pulls itself all the way over. And then if I connect the power the other way around, preferably without getting my fingers in the way, it ought to jump back the other way. Yeah. Okay, so that was unusual. Don't get many like that. Carefully. Get me tweezers to put that steering spring back in the right place. It's a very light spring, centering the steering. Right, that's back in place. That one, and on top of those, those little pegs sticking up, going to those holes there. power on it again. Yeah, there we go. Oh well that was interesting. Okay, which way round did they go? So that should fit straight on top. That little lug went down in there. There we are, so that's back in place. Put the screws right over here so I didn't lose them.
So I think that's all the interesting bits we can show, but we can't show it running because none of my transmitters want to talk to that receiver. So like I say, it'll just go in the junk pile. And at some time in the future, I might find a suitable transmitter. Or I might just rob it for parts. Because I do like that gearbox at the back there. So I'll put it put it all back together now. So there we are, back together. Unfortunately, we can't watch it working. So I can't get a transmitter to talk to it. So, jump box for now.